in eukaryotes, nuclear chromosomes are packaged by proteins into a condensed structure called chromatin. This allows the very long DNA molecule to fit into the cell nucleus. The structure of chromosomes and chromatin varies through the cell cycle. And so chromosomes are even more condensed than chromatin and are an essential unit for cellular division because the long strands of chromatin can get knotted extremely quickly. So chromosomes may exist in either duplicated or unduplicated form. When I ask you what a chromosome looks like, what you traditionally give me is something like a big X. That is a duplicated structure. And it's sort of a misconception. What you really have is you have two linear chromosomes here and here that are tightly coiled around histone proteins and supercoiled until you get to this small chromosomal structure. They're duplicated copies of the DNA, and they're joined by a protein structure called a centromere, which is made of different proteins and so forth that hold the two sister chromatids together to form that duplicated chromosome that you're used to. If you're a unicellular organism, cell division is going to be how you reproduce. It could be something simple in bacteria like binary fission up to unicellular eukaryotes using mitosis. If you are a multicellular organism, dividing cells is going to be for growth and repair, fixing damage. So you do need to be aware there's two different things going on here. Mitosis is when the genetic material is split. The nucleus goes away. You split the genetic material until you form two new nuclei. When you actually split everything else, that is cytokinesis. Cyto is cell and kinesis is split or move. So mitosis and cytokinesis, while connected, are not the same thing. The cell cycle is a process of growth and division that occurs in eukaryotic cells. The first section is your interphase. Okay, so the interphase is going to represent cell growth and it has three subphases, G1, S, and G2. So that's the blue in this picture. And then you have the actual division steps, which are these guys. Now, like we said before, mitosis is the splitting of the nucleus, and that involves five substeps, whereas cytokinesis is the splitting of the cytoplasm, and that involves splitting everything besides the nucleus. Cells spend the majority of the cell cycle in interphase, and the purpose of interphase is for cell growth and to prepare for mitosis and cytokinesis. So this is really 90% of the cell's life cycle, so quite a bit. Now, the DNA is going to be very loose, chromatin. There's no sense putting forth the energy of making chromosomes when you're not copying, or I'm sorry, when you're not separating DNA. Now, the nucleus and nucleolus are there, firm, and so interphase is all about growth. It has three subsets. G1, or gap 1, is my growth and maturation. Basically, this cell just came off a cytokinesis and it needs to grow up and becomes adult. Okay, once that's done, you're going to go to your S phase where your DNA is going to copy. You're going to go from that chromatid to that chromosome that you're used to seeing. So that does not occur until the S phase. After the S phase, you have the G2, the gap 2, and that is going to be copying organelles and proteins and everything you need for mitosis to occur. Now I should explain that the G does not stand for growth, as you might have noticed, it stands for gap. When they were first studying these cells, it looked like there was gaps in the cell cycle because you couldn't see anything happen with the microscopes that they had. But actually a lot of things are happening. Mitosis, at least the way that I split it up, has five subsets. The first step is prophase. In prophase, the nuclear envelope begins to break down, as you can see. The chromatin is condensing into the chromosomes that you are used to. The nucleolus is going away, which is the structure that makes ribosomes. And the centrosome is splitting apart. So they're moving to opposite poles, and they're beginning to produce this early mitotic spindle made of microtubules. Prometaphase is a phase that your text often skips. Uh, it is an intermediate phase. All of the steps have intermediate phases, but this is the only one you need to remember. So prometaphase, basically it's prophase at the very, very end, according to your textbook. The difference is, is that the spindle fibers have attached to the chromosomes. When that happens, they form a structure called a kinetochore. That's very important because inside the kinetochore are these little motor proteins, which you may remember from cell structures, 
that allow your chromosomes to be moved along these microtubules, and it is a why your DNA and chromosomes are able to move during mitosis. So without this structure, there could be no movement. So kinetic movement core is center, so is the movement center of the cell, or of the chromosome. Metaphase is when the chromosomes have aligned in the middle of the cell, uh, and it's going to at this imaginary equator line called the metaphase plate. And this is where your cells are going to check that everything can separate properly and prepare for the next step. In anaphase, the centromere is removed by using enzymes that cut the proteins that hold them together. So the sister chromatids will split and move towards opposite poles. Now that's not the only thing that happens. Some of these microtubules are pushing against each other and they're going to cause the cell to elongate outwards, increasing the speed of travel as you go. So the cell is going to stretch and the poles are going to move and everything is going to separate from where they were at metaphase. Telophase is the last phase of mitosis and this is when you basically see the reverse of prophase. The spindle fibers break down and dissolve, the nuclear membrane starts to reform, the nucleolus starts to reform, the chromosomes stretch back out into chromatin, and I'm beginning to see this trough or furrow forming, and that is the beginning of cytokinesis. The actual process of mitosis and cytokinesis is different in plants and animals. If you remember from cell structures, plant cells do not have centrioles. Okay, so they don't have those centrioles to make the spindle structures so that everything can work and grow. Because those microtubules that you need to form the kinetochore are built by the centrioles. So how do plants do this? Well, plants have a bit of evolution on us. And so instead of using centrioles as their microtubule organizing center, their nuclear envelope, when it breaks down, becomes their microtubule organizing center. So they don't need centrioles for this process to occur like we do. Now the division of cytoplasm into two individual cells is cytokinesis and the process is different between plants and animals. In animal cells microfilaments form a ring of actin around the cell and then tighten, 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 tighten until the cell pinches into two. But plants are a bit different so instead of using actin what they do is they have the Golgi body produce a lot of tiny little vesicles those vesicles line up, fuse together, and they form a cell plate. That cell plate will eventually fuse with the cell wall to produce a new section of cell wall. And that is how cytokinesis is in plants, which is very different from animals. Actually, look at this from a diagram point of view. You can follow the steps and see in the anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis. We've seen some prophase there. It's occurring <coughs> step by step by step. Now, this is only looking at mitosis. This is not looking at the rest of the organelles dividing and so forth. That's dividing in the background of this picture. If you look at a real life picture, it looks about, well, close. So we can see anaphase and telophase, prophase again. So you can see these things step by step. Now this is greatly sped up. The actual process can take a couple of hours maybe a day. It really depends on the type of cell that you're looking at. Some cells only divide once and never divide again, so it varies. One thing you do need to understand is that not all of the cells in an organism are going to be in the same phase at the same time. So you can see in this picture there's a lot of cells in interphase. Uh, we've got some telophase up here, or anaphase maybe. Uh, these guys are lining up in the middle, so we're going into metaphase. Uh, this is condensing, maybe prophase or prometaphase, it's hard to tell right here, but you get the idea. They're not all in the same phase at the same time, so don't think that they are going to be.